What's going on YouTube? Spitfire here. Bringing you guys a deck profile from Oracle Think Tank, Tsukiyomi style. And here we go. Actually, before I get started, I just want to make a quick comment. Uh, thank you for everybody watching my videos. Uh, and so who, Everybody who subscribed, I really appreciate that. And then just one thing quickly here. This obviously isn't the only way to, to build the deck. This is the deck uh, profile that I build. This is my preference. Obviously, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, but just, just, you know, just to clarify, um, you know, anyway, here we go. Uh, Godhawk is my, obviously, starting vanguard. And we'll go ahead and just start with the triggers. For heal. For draw. Two of each, just to mess with people. For crit. And another four. Now, when I started first playing this deck, when I first got it, um, I ran eight criticals just because that's what I was used to. I ran eight in my uh, Kagero. And I just really didn't like it at first. I, I hated it. You know, I, did, I think I thought eight criticals were terrible for this deck. I thought you needed the draws. And as I got better with the deck, I was able to manage my cards better, and I really, you know, I love the eight criticals. I, people don't really expect it against Oracle, I guess, too much. Maybe in, you know, high tournaments they do, but not not in typical Oracle. Typical Oracle is running the minimum of, uh, you know, six draws usually. Anyway, here we go. Grade ones, I run four of the perfect guards. Battle Sister Chocolate, obviously four Crescent Moons, the first in the ride chain. Now, I also run two Milk and three Gemini. Now, you'll see why probably in a little bit, but I, I, I really like hitting for 21k with my Vanguard, and this is really the only reason I put them in here. Um, they also can be helpful if you're not run, if you're not, you know, getting into your Gemini's for your Toms, obviously, uh, to hit those numbers. So it's not the it's not the worst thing in the world if you draw two. You know, if you know if you have healthy hand, which you should anyway, if you're not completely losing the game, uh, you're still going to get that uh, that 10k boost, uh, which it's a six plus 4k if you have more than 4 in your hand. Which is nice, because if you're at grade 3, uh, and you only have 2 cards in your hand, hit that vanguard first, you get that double trigger. Before the attack hits, you have 4 cards in your hand, so you will get the boost. I don't know, I don't, you know, I don't know if everybody knows that. But e remember, it's, it's, it's 4 cards when the attack hits, and the, you trigger check before the attack hits. So if you need uh, 1 or 2 cards to get that 4th card, Remember, you're gonna, you could get through the drive check. Anyway, uh, three Geminis. So it's really five heavy back row. Okay, grade two. I run four Silent Toms. I think he's too good not to run four right now. Um, uh, yeah, it's just that's just my opinion on it. Um, second ride chain, four Half Moon, obviously. Uh, four, Oracle Guardian, Red Eye. And one, Battle Sister Mocha. Um, Battle Sister Mocha, purely preference. Obviously, I can run whatever I want, but, uh, I guess the only, I actually, you know what, you know the reason I ran her? I ran her on the off chance that I get a milk because if you get a milk and you can you have her in front of her you're hitting for 21 and for oracles for a rear guard column to hit for anything more than into the 20k ranges is is really good it it's very situational um but I haven't found drawing her to ever be a problem so that's just my preference on that um, anyway, here we go. Grade threes. I do run four full moons. 
which is questionable. Most people run three. Um, the reason I run four, I guess, in the beginning, it was just to make sure I, I guaranteed hit that ride chain um, because I was testing out builds where I was only running the four for my grade threes. Uh, I've since switched to what is it, seven grade threes, the standard, I believe it is. Um, so I'm, I may take her down to three. I don't know yet. I'll have to, I'll have to play more around with it. Um, but, all right. The other grade threes. This where it gets a little bit more interesting. I am running one CEO. Uh, obviously interchangeable, depending on preference. Uh, it's the backup ride, and I am running two, still vampires. So you guys can see them. Now, I'll go ahead and explain the card to you because this is obviously not an Oracle Think Tank card at all. Get the other one here. It is a, uh, a still vampire. It's a 10K Vanguard. It's a dark irregular. Uh, first ability is it's an auto at the Vanguard position. At the beginning of your main phase, Soul Charge 1. And this unit gains plus 2,000 until end of turn, which is good because if you're riding him, it means you obviously did not get your full moon Tsukiyomi. All right, and if you didn't get full moon Tsukiyomi, odds are you're going to be missing soul uh, for that six soul for the use abilities. So it helps you soul charge once per turn, which is great. Works great synergy with this deck. And then the second ability, which is really the whole reason I'm running it, the Mega Blast. Uh, you can activate this at Vanguard or Rear Guard position, by the way. It's like all Mega Blasts. It's a Soul Blast of 8, taking 8 out of Soul and retiring. And you're Counter Blasting 5 of your damage. So it's, you know, it's you got to plan for it. It's basically a final turn move. All right. Now the skill is choose one of your opponent's rear guards and put that unit in your opponent's vanguard position. And at the beginning phase of that turn, your opponent chooses a card from his or her soul and rides it. So basically you're choosing a rear guard on your opponent's field, forcing them to ride it for the, the entire duration of your turn, and then they get to re-ride from their soul afterwards. So not only is this amazing because you're going to choose the lowest attacking van, uh, rear guard usually to, to, uh, to place on the vanguard so you can win, but it also, if you don't final turn, they're out one rear guard anyway. Now, this is where it gets even more interesting. All right. Because if you look at your silent toms and you look at the skill for still still vampire let's say let's say you have two toms out which perfect ideal you got two toms in your hand you got a still vampire uh you you haven't counter blasted you're at five damage and you're lucky enough for your opponent to have a grade zero out on the field somewhere okay let's let's get a grade zero here all right So obviously they, they nobody should putting, be putting triggers on their field rarely ever. But let's just say they did. So th they have a grade zero somewhere. You force them to ride it. Their vanguard is now at grade zero and 5,000 attack. All right. Now if we look at Silent Tom's ability one more time, I'll read it for you quickly. During the battle that these this unit attacks, if you have an Oracle think tank vanguard your opponent cannot call grade cannot normal call grade zero units to guard you know guys I am a complete noob epic failure during the battle that this unit attacks, if you have an Oracle Think Tank Vanguard, your opponent cannot call 
grade zero units to guard. Okay? So obviously you never want to have this as your vanguard because you can still use his ability as a rear guard. All right. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, quickly. You have you force him to ride the grade zero. You have silent toms in him. You force him to ride it. And you put the other silent tom because obviously you're going to have this on the side. And your opponent basically cannot guard. They can only use interceptors. They're blocked from using grade zeros because of tom. And because they've ridden the vanguard that is now grade zero, they cannot guard with a grade one or a grade two. Obviously they can't guard with grade three because grade threes don't have defense. But it's pretty much a final turn move. Um, it is situational. It does work better versus decks uh, that do not focus on attacking you early, uh, like a Pale Moon or, or something like that. Because you're obviously going to have to set this up to do it. All right? So if, if, if you're going to be wanting to constantly defend, uh, you know, have to use counter blasts, for Tsukiyomi, um, you're, it, it's just pointless to save up for that much because you're going to lose by that point anyway. But if you're facing a deck where you're able to defend, you're doing reasonably well, you're getting some ride change, you have cards in hand, I mean, even if you miss this, you can still soul charge. He's still, he's still a good backup vanguard. He's not useless. His, his only purpose isn't just for that Mega Blast. If you miss this, you still have... You still can ride these, and of course you still have one CEO, so you're not throwing all your cards in one basket, but it's very useful. Of course you could put this to three, but I'm running two right now, and you know, I think I'm fine with that for now. But, you know, that's, this is the way I play it. It's worked out for me. I've been able to ride it, uh, I mean, I've uh, been able to Mega Blast a couple of times to my opponent's dismay, and, uh, you know, it's been fun. So, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Any uh, comments, uh, questions, or uh, just, uh, you know, anything, just uh, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.